Greetings everyone. I'm going to read an article that I found in the Jamaica Observer and it was written on Monday, July 8th, 2019. Mandeville, Manchester. The Manchester Municipal Corporation corruption trial, which has been on break since June 26th, is scheduled to resume, resume today. The trial started in the Manchester Parish Court on June 3rd for fraud allegations in the excess of 400 million at the local government body. In 2016, the case opened after a joint raid of corporate offices of the cooperation and homes of some senior employees by investigators from the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency, MOCA, the Financial Investigations Division and the Integrity Commission, formerly the Office of the Contractor General. The investigation continued leading to the eighth accused now on trial being arrested and charged in relation to direct or indirect involvement in the alleged misappropriation of funds. The accused are former Deputy Superintendent of the Road and Work Department, Sandra Elliott, former Director of Finance and Acting Chief Executive Officer, Secretary Manager, David Harris, former Temporary Work Overseer, Kendale Roberts, former bank employee, Radcliffe McLean, former employee of Elliot Duane Sibbles, Elliot's wife, Tasha Gay, Goldburn Elliot, and his parents, Eduardo and Myrtle Elliot. The charges include forgery, conspiracy to defraud, obtaining money under false pretenses, and facilitation of the retention of criminal property. More than 10 witnesses have testified in the case to date, including retired, retired Mandeville Mayor, Brenda Ramsey, former Deputy Mayor and current Councillor, People's National Party, Spur Tree Division in Northwestern Manchester, Erwin Facey, a representative from the Integrity Commission, a representative from MOCA and an, an accounting clerk from the corporation. At least four witnesses, some claiming to be friends of the former Deputy Superintendent of Road and Works, have admitted on the sword test sworn testimony to cash in checks drawn on the municipal corporation's account in their name for work they had not done. One young woman estimated she had encashed some 40 checks amounting to about $15 million as instructed by accused Sandra Elliott for work she did not perform. She admitted on the cross-examination that she misinformed police investigators in a statement to them saying that she was a contractor in charge of beautification project of the corporation because Elliot said that in the information she should give and she was doing him a favor as his friend. And it goes on, parents are involved, other members. I'm going to put this link in the description so you can read it for yourself. And now I'm going to let you listen to audio. I'm going to allow you 
to also listen to this for yourself by putting a link in the description at the end of this video. Now, when I listen to this family speak, my heart is broken and I'm very angry. I'm also surprised, and I'm not saying it's not out there, but I didn't see it. I never heard any of this on social media. Stories like this that requires a highlight never usually get the kind of highlight that would want to see it get. It's very unfortunate. So this is a story of some poor people in Jamaica whose, daughter, whose family member got burnt, rushed to the hospital, and died 12 years later, 12, sorry, 12 days later without any care because there's no medical unit in Jamaica. And I read earlier a $400 million stolen at the parish council in Mandeville. And that, that that's just what we know about. Okay, what we know about corruption you see politicians when um campaign come around stand on stage and tell the people you did this you did that they stay there and openly confess all the criminal activity all the ways they have robbed the jamaican people and somehow people hear the story they hear these guys boasting because it can't be anything else but boasting boasting about the monies that they have stolen these ones our own people do us more harm than anybody combined slavery and all these other atrocity upon the backs of african people you know why because when others even slow their role and pull back on some of the things that used to happen to us as african people these ones boldfacedly in our face have done the worst when i heard the cry of that family and based on what the woman said she she appealed to andrew wholeness she cried out see it's not terrible enough that there's no bur burnt units in jamaica but it's a disgrace that these ones would would be suffering this kind of thing and the government who you elect do not turn up or send their representative to ensure that this young girl have the fighting chance. What would be her reason for not being flown out of Jamaica to seek help when you got individuals who can pay someone millions of dollars? The IMF has had to go to Jamaica. And when we see it on the surface, we'll say, you know, these ones are doing bad to our people and these individuals are lending us money at rates that we can't pay it back. But you need to look closely. You need to examine this thing very closely because you see, we are programmed to hate our oppressors. We are programmed. It's very easy to hate people who did these atrocities over the years and who continues to do it it's very easy but when you look at the people in our midst that continue to facilitate the destruction of our own people when you compare those things who are you most angry with who is more evil the stranger that comes in your midst and um, attempt to bring you into captivity or the ones who are in your midst from your midst that keep you there so many of us who understand that, you know, the, 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 the thing that happened to ancestors in slavery and we feel hurt and angry, if we're not careful, we don't look at the big picture. At this time, we stay angry, we stay hateful, failing to realize that the very ones who once kept us into captivity also opened doors of opportunity for many of us today. And I don't want you to misunderstand this message. It's very critical, though, for you to think that the very ones that did these horrible things in our history are also the ones we have to look to for answers. We have to look to these indiv individuals for rescue because many of us who were in Jamaica, if we did not leave that space, 
Many of us would have suffered and died. We would have suffered the entire life and died, even though people in our midst had the power to change our circumstances, to do something that would allow us to prosper, to grow. These ones are thieves, dishonest people who take money that they borrow. They're giving money to do and they love to make it seem like England and America or places like this have not done anything or not doing anything for Jamaica. And so people grow up with this resentment because we hear about our history. And then when we look and see the suffering around us and our people, our, 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 our politicians like, like Puss, you know, that the cats that eat this butter and wipe them out clean and leave us with the impression that our oppressors are the one who continue to oppress them when it's a lie. It's a lie when these doors open up and Jamaican people travel around the world, they're able to make something of themselves. They're able to help their families. And while they live in Jamaica with these same politicians that they elect who have billions of dollars that they get from the World Health Organization, that they get from the IMF, that they could have chosen to use to benefit our people, they put it in their pockets, siphon it off. Build uh, or purchase homes, glamorous homes in different parts of the world. And then the Jamaican people have to pay for it. Jamaican people's descendants, the kids that are not even born yet, is going to come and pay for that $400 million that was stolen in the Manchester you know, Parish Council. Not to mention the other politicians in Jamaica who steal And we say our enemy is, you know, white people. And we show a few videos with police beating black people. And we make that a big thing. Not to say that it shouldn't be a big thing, but I'm saying who is beating us more? Who is beating us more? How many people were living in Jamaica and they couldn't even read? And when they move and go to different places in the world, they have the opportunity to go and pursue their education. And the color of their skin doesn't really matter. Many people are able to do great things with their life after they get these opportunities. So when we're looking at things that are happening now and look at things that are happening in the world to black people, we can't lose focus. We have to search ourselves. We have to examine the thing closely and know that our, our biggest enemy are our own. Because here's the danger. Those who, who are uh, ha or have done things uh, to the detriment of black people, oftentimes don't even hide the fact that they're doing these things. What's more dangerous is that our people presenting the story, regurgitating the slow story about his, about um, our history, about slavery. These ones reminding you of, of it always, not for you to be, um, you know, remembering and honoring your forebears, but for you to feel low. They have done the greatest job because guess what? When they get millions and billions of support, from the UK, from America, from different parts of the world that could have been used to benefit our people. They take it for themselves. How can there not be a burnt unit in Jamaica when someone stole $400 million? This, few, this handful of person was able to steal this. When the IMF goes to Jamaica and have to say, you can't build roads, you can't build hospitals, you can't do all these things because of money that they stole. So we get to hear that, that, that the IMF is micromanaging them and, you know, I always say, oh, they're just so wicked for doing this when we're not hearing the other part of the story. That is because they ripped off the money that was given to them to do certain things. They robbed their own people. So they borrowed the money and they use it for their own purpose, for their own good. Why would a hospital in 2020 not have gloves? Listen to the lady. She said the doctors have no gloves. And sometimes these doctors get bad name. 
like they're not doing anything or they're not good or they're useless. And when you hear these stories of doctors trying to keep their patients alive in Jamaica and be a minimum, and you got prime minister have a house looking like a fort. And there was a time when people talked about that house and I thought, what is wrong? He, it's nice that he has a beautiful home in Jamaica, but you have this monstrosity of a home. And the people in the surrounding area to this home live like dogs. Zero health care. Dog eat your supper if you get sick in Jamaica. And you got the individuals such as Andrew Honest. And Andrew Honest, I know you're a powerful man. I know you have the backing of powerful people in the world. And that shows me the who you are and not who they are, who you are. Because no one can support you and give you such power unless you demonstrate your wicked intention. You're a very wicked man. You are a wicked, evil man. And as, as much as you are strong and powerful, me not afraid of you. You can send your friends and your clones and your cronies for me. I'm not afraid of your evil man. So the woman cried out to you and you paid her no attention pretty much because you're not for the poor. You've made that very clear in your statements and I don't like you. And I'm not afraid of you. But I also know that to mention your name could mean death. Because many of you individuals that are so powerful and so associated you're wicked and if this is the last video I do I tell you this I'm not afraid of you or anybody who's associated to you the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want yet I walk to the valley of the shadow of death I fear no evil these are not prayers they're spells and when you know this, people, when you understand that these ones use these things and cast spells upon you. No one teaches you these things, but they know it. They know it. They know the power of the Psalms. And when they're using it, they're not using it to bless you. They're using it to curse you. And so you have to reclaim yourself, reclaim your life and understand how these work. They're poetry on the surface, but they're spells and they're powerful spells. And it's time that black people learn how to understand these spells and free themselves from these bondages. I've deliberately not come out and tried to show or prove to anybody that I'm not prejudiced. Because I know me, I know who I am. I know my relationship with people. I know the horrible experiences I've had with black people at the hand of black people and I've known the blessing that I've received from people of other race. And being in this country is testament to that. Opportunities that were denied to me in Jamaica that I never ever would have experienced because I happened to be born in a poor family are things that I had here. I had, you know, white folks saying to me, please go and do this. I'm encouraging you and supporting me to do things that would uplift me. And then there are those who would come and do things to you that, that just make you feel broken inside. And I've learned over time, it's not about the race. It's about the personality. And so as we have friends in all race, we have enemy within our own the world health organization can come and say this is our intention this is what we want to see when the jamaican government decides to do something and reinforce these ideas or suggestion they are often more wicked more cruel than the ones who set it out so there are things that the world health organization would suggest as a remedy or steps, preventative measures. And when it is in the hand of the Jamaican government, they are so tyrannical that what they do to the people is worse than any other organization 
would do to their own. Because here, the mandate is put out there and solutions are, or things are predicted to happen in the future. But there is always an opportunity for you to say no, even though, even though we know that in this time you might say no and the penalty might be great. But the problem is not that these penalties will be great. The problem that in the African spaces, the ones who are left with the whip, the slave masters, lackeys, they still have the, 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 the slave drivers, they were far worse than those owners in some cases. They would whip their brother. They would whip them until their skin fall off. What is it in our nature? Whip them so much just to keep their position. I thought when I started doing this video, I was just going to go off the deep end. But for some reason, a, a kind of peace and calm came over me. And I'm saying the lady's story, you know, her tears, her family's plea to that government, to Andrew Holness. Now, Andrew, before I leave this, I'm going to say that you want to give the Jamaican people the impression that you're there out of concern for their well-being and their health. And this woman cried out, and what did you do to help her? Hmm? What did you do to help her? Do you think anybody who has direct linkage to slavery in the past could be any worse than you? No, couldn't be worse than you. So as the, the government from the two parties, you know, continue to steal the money that is supposed to uh, be used, to, to build the people. You got people being deported from the UK, from England, from Canada, from around the world for things that they've done and they have lost their status. And when they go to Jamaica, they get money, government get money for their support. And all you do is see these persons, their family pick them up and, you know, dog eat their supper if they have no one to pick them up. Where is the money that the UK gives? The UK recently decided to do cutbacks because of what this virus is doing in the world and how their economy is affecting is affected by it and so they're cutting back on certain support that they give to jamaica in a way or an attempt to 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 deal you know sort of a reset to deal with their own economies and so we know they're getting monies how many times did the Jamaican government come out and announce how much billion dollars or millions of dollars they receive from UK or America in support? And where is that money going? In the pockets of many of these criminal politicians. But listen, the, the, the word politico comes from your own research. And when we talk about politics, uh, neopolitic, look that up for yourself and understand that, that, that don't think that many of these politicians in our African spaces have ever done anything else but betray their own people. Evil, wicked. It's not that Jamaica doesn't have money to have state-of-the-art medical facilities. They borrow and they beg. When you hear people begging in Jamaica and, you know, being so awful, some of these people coming and getting insulted all the time uh, by people when they're seeking assistance. Don't, don't, don't think it's just something that, you know, happens off the cuff. The Jamaican people are insulted daily. The people who are most in need are treated terribly. You got a one woman in Jamaica now who was doing charity and, and people are going to her and oftentimes you hear her saying, we're well, go to Andrew Holness, I'm not your poly, your elected official. A single woman living in a ghetto, answering the cries of many people, whether you like her or you don't like her. You know, you, you can't deny the fact that the woman is doing what the government was supposed to be doing. And they didn't. This one woman take up a phone and appeal to people overseas to assist her in helping people and these people with billions of dollars and they want to come out here and tell you 
that all of a sudden they care about your well-being and your health. They're a curse to our people. These ones who get into politics so that they can have um, these billions of dollars at their, their fingertip. These criminals. And we don't always see their deed. But there are these ancient ones that see it and they reveal it. And you may think that they're going to get away. They won't. They will not. Now do better uh, to my fellow vloggers or Jamaican YouTubers. Do better in seeking out some of these stories and putting it out there. Sometimes we see it happen with Kaylan. But this woman, again, I didn't see it. So if it was there, I apologize. But we need more of our Jamaican YouTubers to, to, to look at cases such as the lady... Um, I think they did start a GoFund for me for her, but, but, you know, the young girl was not able to get the help she needed and she died. Our worst enemy is not our former slave masters. It is the ones that you go and elect and put in office who then turn out and start strutting on you and start disrespecting you and alienating you and disrespecting you. They are the true enemies. From the story back in Africa, where uh, they kept, grabbed their people and, and sold them into captivity. They're doing it now. That's why I believe that story. You can see it. You can see it. So you're powerful and you're, you know, nicely associated, um, Andrew Honus. But I don't know who see you. I see right through you. And you're a very wicked man. You're evil. You're wicked. But what I like about you, though, you don't hide it. You don't. Time and history will speak of us, sometimes kindly and sometimes unkindly. And whatever seeds we sow in darkness, they will stay there and germinate and come to light. And the good we do to others return to us. To the people once again who lost their loved one, to be in the hospital and watch a person dying and nothing is being done to address the situation. It's very terrible. The same thing is true with Kaylan's situation. Horrible. And that man drive around and, you know, walk around and open his mouth and speak as if there's anything about him for anyone to respect. Wicked. Very, very wicked. But my life doesn't belong to man. It belongs to the creator. And though I walk in the valley in the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Creator is with me. And unless you know, know how to speak these words and ask for divine protection, every day you face death. By people who you trust. Our enemy is not the one that we say is over there. It's oftentimes the ones we see the ones we put our trust in. But there will be a reckoning. Stay blessed, everyone.